Previously, we pointed to a metaphor as one of the ways with which we can actually tell a story, once we know what the story is. Now I'd like to try to expand our search into other techniques. Welcome to the next episode of Thinking Camera. A lot of things that we will be talking about happen instinctually. People are compelled to react to what's going on to them or what they observe outside. And in order to process it or share it, they talk about this. Either writing or making movies. Not always it is triggered by complex apparatus rational, semi-academic, that uh, makes categories and forces or invites those who tell stories to be fully mindful of them. I want to make sure that uh, we know that we are actually trying to bridge two very distinctly different uh, orders, dynamic, visceral, with something that is based on rational thinking, analytical approach and such. And um, I think that bridging those things can actually offer the filmmakers certain technologies should they want to use them. This way of talking about stuff that is very difficult to talk about has certain danger because it is with a certain amount of uh, agility of one's talk and thought process, it is fairly easy to talk anything into anything else. Philosophers, analytical minds, film scholars possess that ability. In this essay, I will argue the hypothesis that Some Like It Hot is a Lacanian discourse confronting Wittgenstein's theory of language, Sprachspiel, with that of John Locke's view of social inequality. Sometimes it's extremely intriguing and um, spectacular, but not necessarily always uh, connected really with the subject at hand. So this is a, a bit of a warning to myself, mostly, to be careful with uh, analysis and, and, and talking about stuff and seeing ideas uh, where they might not be initially appearing or it might not be their make, uh, the maker of a film to actually consider that idea. It's always a risky uh, ground. Okay, Felix, I'll probably be talking to the editors in the next couple of days and I'll send you an email as soon as we have some kind of decision. If I could put a line in this article about Levinsky has already told me what his next project is going to be, but he's asked that I not divulge the information yet. The editors would love something like that, Felix. I honestly don't know. You see... You see, I do not choose. You do not choose either, I suppose. comes to you. So aside from metaphor, how else can we tell the story? Well, usually what happens is something strikes us, something intrigues us, we experience something, we see something that is uh, disturbing, full of awe, amazing and we want to share it. When I was 14, in this place I had a very powerful experience of unity with everything that is.
In other words, we are trying to structure our storytelling according to how we remember uh, the event or the dynamic that we are trying to tell, which is sort of close to as if it happened in real life, if something like this exists. So we talked about later. So the second uh, way would be trying to give justice to as it really appears in reality. And then a third one would be if we start with an idea, a concept, and uh, that is what bothers or intrigues us or compels us to actually express ourselves. And then based on that initial impulse, we construct the entire structure, the entire drama, the sequence of images in time. Uh, let me bring in the authority of uh, Stanley Kubrick. When he was asked to write forward to the collection of Krzysztof Kieślowski and Krzysztof Pisiewicz's script for Decalogue, he wrote I am always reluctant to single out some particular feature of the work of a major filmmaker because it tends inevitably to simplify and reduce the work. But in this book of screenplays by Shistov Kislowski and his co-author Shistov Pishevich, it should not be out of place to observe that they have the very rare ability to dramatize their ideas rather than just talking about them. By making their points through the dramatic action of the story, they gain the added power of allowing the audience to discover what's really going on, rather than being told. They do this with such dazzling skill, you never see the ideas coming, and don't realize until much later how profoundly they have reached your heart. Stanley Kubrick, January 1991. That uh, perceptiveness of Stanley Kubrick uh, and seeing that the idea was driving what uh, Kieślowski and Pieślewicz were doing is, um, in my mind, justification to use this as a um, way to categorize a certain approach. It's kind of rare but it happens, and when it happens, it's just phenomenal. Now, those three things, roughly speaking, because there are of course many others, meaning the metaphor, the idea, and the as is reality, uh, seldom appear um, by themselves. It's usually the blend of the three of them. But I think that if we are starting out and have a certain idea that we want to actually expand into a story on screen, it might be helpful to some to be mindful of this distinction. Okay. Let's be more specific. What is Andrzej Żuławski's possession about? For the first time, you look vulgar to me. <gasps> you are not different from anyone else. We are all the same.